Hello Floss Tube. my name is Deb, I'm the Traveling Stocking Stitcher, and I'm really glad that you joined me here today. Today's episode is entitled Double Dutch, because I have two pieces that are uh, representing Amsterdam. Uh, we recently went to Amsterdam, uh, took a side trip for a couple of days to break up the flights home on, a, on another tour that we took, and so I had a couple of working titles. Uh, instead of Double Dutch, I was thinking about calling it Holland Days on the Side. Turns out Holland Days is not really from Holland, a uh, French chef. Uh, invented it for a visit from the King of the Netherlands um, to France. And then I thought about calling it, I loved Amsterdam, wooden shoe. So it's called Double Dutch. Here's my little souvenir from Amsterdam, my little Dutch clogs. We have a running joke in our family that whenever you see a pair of these out in the wild, you point to them and say, what are these? Somebody says, Dutch shoes, and you say gesundheit. A couple of fun facts. I like to put fun facts in here, and I have a lot of them. I had a lot of questions when I went to Amsterdam. Uh, first one was Netherlands, Amsterdam, Dutch. When do you use what? What's appropriate? Now, it turns out that recently, uh, in January 2020, they officially rebranded the country. Uh, they no longer call it Holland, because Holland is really a region um, a province, and actually there's two provinces, North Holland and South Holland, so it's more accurate to call the entire country the Netherlands. Fun fact number two, the Netherlands is only one country in the Kingdom of Netherlands. Others are Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, Saint Martin. Uh, and then the Netherlands. So it's really the Kingdom of Netherlands. Why do we use the in front of the Netherlands? Fun fact number three, um, if it's got a political name in the title, like the Republic of China, you use the. If it's a grouping of islands, like the Philippines, you use the. Um, the Netherlands, because they've got more than just the one, the Kingdom of Netherlands. Um, and we just, even though the Dutch call it Nederland for just a specific area, um, we just have never gotten around to change it from the plural. Okay, then why are the people called the Dutch? Um, it turns out that in Old English, Dutch just meant a people or a nation, um, which is why Germany is called Deutschland. Um, and then over time, Dutch began to, re began to refer to people from the area, which is now the Netherlands and Germany, before separating into Low Dutch, um, that are from the Lowlands, which is where Netherlands is now, Belgium and that area, and the High Dutch, which are the Germans. So that's where the Dutch stuff comes from. And then fun fact number five, I think we are up to, um, is that people are called Amsterdammers, but they also sometimes are referred to as Mockamers. Um, it's derived from the city's alternate name of Mockham, which is the Yiddish word for place or safe haven, which is um, Amsterdam often was referred to by locals. Um, they had a very large Jewish population prior to World War II. That's a little introduction to Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Let's take a look at the stitching. First up is Dutch Village Monochrome. This is from Nara X Stitch Patterns. Um, last time you saw it, I was at 31.63%. Um, this is not my usual style, but it's just so Amsterdam-y. I could not do it. Um, like I mentioned, they have a couple of other ones that I showed in my last video. Um, they have a patchwork one, which is the same desi design, but with colors. And then there's a Dutch Village Brown. Um, buildings are a little different. It's not quite square. Um, but it's sort of similar to this one. It's also a bit wider. I was having issues I talked about in the last couple of videos um, with the windows. Um, first of all, um, there were a lot of balconies and, you know, I think of South American dictator balconies. They don't have a lot of those in, in Amsterdam where you stand out there and wave at the crowds. Um, they have windows because there's buildings on either side and you don't have any side light, so all the light has to come in from the front or from the back. So. You, you have to, you don't have any choice but to, to put large windows, um, and you don't want a lot of obstruction. So I was decided to do this. I, I, the frames around the windows, I changed from gray, which was charted, to B5200 to make them white, and then I just did the um, stitching of the windows. And I couched, I did a lot of couching of the windows, um, but here it is. And close here, and you can see. And I did a little freestyling here and there. Sometimes I didn't like some of the, the designs. So, like um, this, this grouping up here, I kind of made up my own design. And over here as well, I made up some of those as well. So, 
that's how it looks. I'm, I'm kind of happy. I, I, at the intersection of all the, the panes of glass, I did couching to keep it flattened out, and I got pretty good at it because there are 186 windows in this thing. Um, which I counted because there were a lot of them. Um, and then at the bottom, I wanted to say Amsterdam. These are my series of travel posters. So I wanted to say Amsterdam. I thought about doing it just across. But then somewhere in the back of my brain, I remember seeing something um, on a t-shirt or something where something with nine letters um, in this configuration. And it could have been the word Amsterdam, could have been, I don't know what. But I thought, oh, well, I will take, I had to chart the letters because I couldn't find anything that were, each, the letters were exactly square, every letter. Um, so these are 15 by 15, which is the amount of space that I had. So I charted those out and did them in the colors of the houses. And I was going to chart on either side windmills or something. And once I got it, I liked the simplicity of it. And I thought, hmm, this is it. This is what I want it to look like. So that's what she looks like. And one of the things I did on here is um, that I've been doing a little bit more, but this one was an excellent candidate for it, was vertical stitching. Um, you used to always stitch left to right horizontally, but because these buildings are tall and skinny, it was much easier to do vertical stitching. And I find um, it's something that uh, Vicki, the Virginia stitcher, had mentioned um, several videos ago, like a year ago or something, and it kind of put a bug in my head. So I've been using that, incorporating that a little bit more in the designs that I do. And um, I find that when you, when you horizontally stitch, you get to the end and you, you come back, it leaves that last stitch always looks a little bumpier. Um, but this... Um, it's also a, a nice alternative to go in rows in the last stitch in, at the top and bottom. Don't get that bumpiness. And it also helps you move um, left to right or right to, to left um, instead of having to go vertically and end up, you know, at one end or the other. Um, so just some food for thought if you haven't thought about doing vertical stitching before. One other thing about this piece is um, it represents the different types of architecture that's in Amsterdam. Now originally they had um, the gables on the houses, the points, they were just triangular. And then um, as you know, time went on, they changed, the architecture changed, um, they went to step gables like these kind of here. You can see they're kind of a step angle. And then after that they went to the spout version. Um, this one here kind of looks like it looks like an inverted funnel. And you took a funnel and put it upside down. It goes up like this. And then after that, they came up with the bell gable. This is probably the best example on here. It looks like, like a church bell, this one here. And then they came up finally with, this is probably the best one down here, the neck gable. It's like a 90 degree angle. It looks like a neck without a head. A lot of times they would do um, scroll work around the gables as well. So here's an example. I think I added this one to this little decoration in here. Um, of the, the different scroll work. And I took a picture of this, this house. We were just walking along. I took a picture of this house. It wasn't until I got back and was working on captioning my stuff and I was looked at the geocode on Google Maps and on the picture and realized it said something about James Bond Tiffany Case House. And so I looked it up and the house that they used in Diamonds Are Forever, um, Sean Connery goes to this house. They use this as the exterior. And um, Tiffany Case, uh, uh, Jill St. John um, was Tiffany, the character of Tiffany Case, who was in a diamond smuggling ring, and uh, so James Bond went to this house, and I just thought it was a cool house. Turns out, it's famous. The next piece I have is called Amsterdam Street Scene PCE0814. Um, it's an anchor kit that I got, um, and it looks very much like Amsterdam. Um, the buildings were, you know, pretty straightforward and easy, easy to do. Um, the backstitching was, there's not a ton of backstitching. Some of it was a little tricky because they only went half half in the middle of things, and so I did some couching, so I have good experience in couching now. Um, but the ten stitches, not a fan of ten stitches. I really, you know, the colors are all pretty much the same. You can't tell where you left off, and, and it's on blue, and you're doing blue on blue. Just not a fan of ten, ten stitching. And then there's a lot of confetti in the reflection, then also in the tulips on the bottom, a lot of um, fractional half stitches, and it's really hard to keep track of where you've been and what you haven't done. Um, so I wore a dress that has tulips on it. We weren't there in tulip season, but... 
And this is what I've got so far. This is on the kit fabric. It's a light blue 16 count. And so I still have a bit more tent stitching to do up here. Um, most of the buildings are, are backstitched. I just missed a couple of this spot right here and these these windows up here. And then I left off, you can see on here that there were some little black decorations on the building and they were very tiny and it was hard to, and they weren't looking good and so I just left them off. I didn't think it added a lot. So, so this is what we're looking at. My favorite part on here are these two little windows down here. The place that we stayed in, uh, the Airbnb, we had a little studio apartment and it was these two little windows that were at the bottom that we stayed in. And so that looks reminds me of, of where we stayed. And I got a, there's a little bit of backstitching on the bolts I haven't done. And then there's no, no backstitching down here, but yeah, the tulips um, was a lot of a lot of confetti, so that's going much slower than I expected. So. so those are the pieces that I've been working on. I've got a few others in my stash that uh, are, fit under the category, and then I've also done a little um, searching for things that um, are things that I might want to add to my collection. Um, as long as we're talking about Amsterdam, I figured I'd show them to you. So the first one I have is Landmarks Around the World. This is from Stony Creek. I think this is about 2004. And I've got Big Ben, and they've got Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame, and the Sphinx, and the Great Wall of China. So you flip it over on the back, and here is the Netherlands piece. Here's the, the windmill. Now, I didn't think I had seen any windmills. Um, and again, it wasn't until I got home and started looking at the pictures and figuring out what was going on. As I figured, you know, windmills probably got to be out in the boonies way out in the countryside to be able to see windmills. And, um, Long story short, we were going to take a Segway tour. Nobody showed up. We had to reschedule till later, um, and later in the evening, so we had some time to kill. And uh, so we were out a little bit further out of the, the, the surroundings, and um, we're walking around, and just happened to to see this windmill. And I thought it was, you know, a tourist attraction or somebody, you know, didn't know it was a real thing. And I got home, and it was from 1631, which back in the day, it was probably in the middle of the countryside. Um, it was a sawmill, it was called De Otter. They had a series of, of mills that were named after animals. And um, so, this is um, a windmill, so officially I can stitch a windmill thing because I saw one. And then another one that I recently purchased is, I've done some several of the John Clayton International pieces. This one was called Tulip Fields. Got a windmill. Also has tulips. Now I mentioned I hadn't seen tulips, but that's okay. I've seen a tulip in my life, so that counts. So some others that I've seen that I like. This one is called um, Old Mill Christmas. It's from Twin Peak Primitives. And what I like about this one is it could be used as a stocking. It's got kind of an L shape to it, and so I thought this would adapt nicely. Um, I figure I could name this one like Sinterklaas, which is the Santa Claus name for um, that the Dutch use for Santa Claus, and uh, so that's a possibility. Um, there's the Awesome Pattern Studios has some an Amsterdam one, which um, I've done a, a few of those designs as well, but I don't, I haven't done the Amsterdam one. They also, I was actually a little more intrigued by, they have um, more of a horizontal one, and they have a blue one, blue Amsterdam, which I think is my favorite because it's got kind of that blue and white Delft um, tile look to it. Um, they have some that are different colors and multicolored. Um, and then Satsuma Street has a pretty little um, city, Amsterdam, as well. So those kind of are all the theme. Um, there is an Amsterdam Dutch travel poster that intrigues me. It's by X Stitch PDF Patterns. And this one is a really big size, but it says on Etsy that they can downsize it for you, make it smaller. So that's one that, if I weren't, hadn't already done just some several Amsterdam street scenes would be an intriguing one because it actually is a travel poster so I might look into that one. Um, there's a Netherlands map from Stitch Lover Shop that um, I liked as well. And then this one I really really want to get. Um, 
I, I think it would make some changes to it. This is Winter in the City by Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, because I wasn't there in the winter, I may leave out like some of the snowflakes. Um, there's some dates that are on the building. I might change those because you did see buildings that had dates on them that were older, obviously. This is, you know, a current date. Um, and I probably would leave off the lettering at the bottom. Or put maybe the word Amsterdam or Netherlands or whatever. So that one I really, um, that might make it in my stash pretty early. Um, the Vivsters. You know I love the Vivsters. If you've seen any of my recent episodes, I've done like three pieces in a row. But she has a Dutch windmill alphabet sampler. Again, probably leave off some of the letters, maybe make it shorter because it's long and skinny. Make it fit in the 11 by 14 frame like I do with most, most of my travel posters. Um, Peppermint Purple has some um, Dutch tiles, a whole series. Um, you can do like I think it's a square of like 16, and they've got individual tiles where they have different flowers in the middle, like there's one with the tulip, obviously, and there's a whole bunch of iris and crocus and uh, lily of the valley and whatever. There's a whole bunch of different um, versions that they have of that. Um, uh, Chatelaine has uh, got Holland Springtime, um, or Holland Mandala. It's either one. Um, so that's a possibility to do one of those uh, if you really want to do something for the Netherlands. Um, anything with a tulip on it um, or any flowers would cover it as well because uh, we did go the, to the Bloomin Market um, that is the, it's kind of a floating uh, market. I don't know if it really floats. They have, I guess it is a floating market because the, you can see that the, the stalls are kind of, they're permanent but they're right along the canal. Um, and so they have all these different flowers that are there. Um, and although I, I heard that it's very unlikely for anything to bloom that comes out of there. I did buy a packet of seeds, though, of zinnias. My neighbor likes to, to plant zinnias every year. So I bought a packet of seeds, and they seem to be doing okay. Um, I don't know if they're as robust as any other seeds you normally get. But um, the bulbs, I guess you have to kind of be wary of what you buy there. So. And then under, there's some sampler ones. I'm not a real big sampler person, but I did see a couple of things that struck my fancy. There's Quakers in Holland. This is by Tempting Tangles. And I thought this was an interesting one. I, I want to do a Quaker thing sometime, and this might be one of the candidates that I use. Um, Ink Circles has Reflections of Amsterdam. Looks like this. And then there's a Double Dutch from Sampler Cove um, that I was intrigued by as well. And then if you move into the kind of the blue and the white, again, this is more associated with the town of Delft, um, where they make the tiles, um, which we didn't go to. Um, and I really can't think of anything that I saw that had blue and white tiles on it, but I like the look. Um, Cooler Design Studio has one that I like. Their mock-ups never look good, but I imagine I tried to find a picture of it really stitched, um, but I thought this might look nice as well. And Joan Elliott has a blue Delft assortment um, tiles that um, I thought would be nice as well. And then I always like, and I'm not going to be able to say it right, um, Historisch Stickmuster um, has the colors of Netherlands. And it's just kind of representing the feel. They have a lot of those where they, um, that I really like. I've got a few of their other pieces um, for other places. But this one is, it's Die Farben de Nederland Delft Bleu. Um, is the, the Dutch saying, version or my version of it. And so kind of here's what the mock-up of the whole thing looks like and then there's uh, the detail piece where it's actually stitched where you can see that. So those are things that I... So those are some recommendations I have for you if you're looking for something Dutch or Amsterdam or related. Um, one of the other things that we did uh, was we visited a repair cafe in Amsterdam. Now, my husband volunteers in the U.S. Um, at what they call fix-it clinics and it's done through our local counties. Um, every month a different county has uh, repair clinic. It's part of the reduce, reuse, recycle, repair initiative to keep things out of the landfill. So people bring things in and they can get them fixed for free. Now one of the reasons I mention it is because I know there's some sewers in the community of Cross Stitch. I'm not one of them, but um, people also volunteer and they bring their sewing machines along and they will do textile repair. And also if somebody has a rip or needs something shortened or whatever, um, they can fix things for them. And so that might be a volunteer opportunity if you're looking for, for things to do. But we went to, because the repair cafe idea started in Amsterdam, so we found one that was open and available. Um, and next to it, they also had a, um, a 
secondhand store, and they call it the Garbage Palace. It's actually, I kid, I'm not going to be able to say the word, I'll put it up on the screen, but the translation is the Garbage Palace, which I thought was hilarious. Um, but it's a secondhand store, people can come in and actually get things up to five items per day free. While we were there, I found some stitch pieces. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of them had water damage, so um, there were some floral pieces that I found. Um, and then there was also this Senorita um, that was stitched as well. And then when we went over to the repair cafe, which was next door, um, on the wall they had this picture and it says um, called Clear Maker, which is um, a tailor in Dutch. And then it had this date of 1870 on it. Now it didn't look that old. I don't know what the significance of the date was, but it was on the wall and it was stitched, so I thought that was kind of cool. Next, I want to do my seal of approval. Now, I don't see a lot of people stitching like buildings in Amsterdam or, you know, windmills and things like that, but there's a lot of Dutch connections um, out there. And you don't need me to tell you about Just Keep Stitching, Pam and Steph, um, but not only have they partnered with Twin Peaks Privative, which is a Dutch designer, um, they're uh, Dutch twins that, uh, and usually Pam and Steph will feature one of their um, their designs on their episodes um, and usually offer a discount as well on their episodes each week. Um, but they also have gone to the Netherlands as in their association with the Twin Peaks Primitives. Um, and so um, there's some episodes, if you haven't been watching pre-COVID, they went to uh, the Netherlands. So episode number 79 and episode number 126 A and B, there's a two-parter where they show their the trip they went to. Um, there and they haven't been for a few years but now it sounds like in the last couple episodes I've watched they've talked about how they've got a trip come upcoming in the next um, few weeks as well so look forward to seeing that so Pam and Steph just keep stitching have a Netherlands connection um, and then there's a lot of Dutch floss tubers um, and also um, on, on Instagram um, they have these stitch katiers and I'm not sure exactly the full if I've got the full group, so I apologize if I missed anybody. But there's Jemima. She's at the Rocking Stitcher. She does floss tube and Instagram. We've got Honey Bee Stitcher, Honey, the letter B Stitcher, and I'll put all of these down below so that if you're looking for them. And I believe she's on Instagram only. And then we have Lovely Stitches 835 or Lydia 835, um, Lydia with a Y, and Jantina Stitches, a J A N T I N underscore Stitches. And then we have creatively yours dot two, which is Debbie, and I think that's her her handle. Um, but I think her channel is creatively yours without the two after it, because she is on floss too. Um, another person that is uh, I've enjoyed watching that has a floss tube um, is Darling Bluebell. This is Miki. I think I'm pronouncing that right. She's on Instagram and floss tube as well. And then Jessica underscore stitches. Um, I think she does it in Dutch, but I've enjoyed watching her. I've subscribed to her because I've enjoyed watching that. And then I have one more recommendation for floss tubers. This is kind of an unrelated shout out, but I've recently, um, she just started up a new channel and watched her first episode and really enjoyed it. It's Sarah, and her um, handle is the Redneck Bifocal Stitcher. And um, really watch the first one. Normally I wait, I watch a couple of episodes. Um, because usually I'm not watching the first one when it first comes up, but I watch a couple of episodes before I decide to subscribe. But I watched the first one, I think I subscribed before I finished, because I really enjoyed her sense of humor and the stuff that she's doing. Um, she does, you know, stockings, she does uh, Mirabilia, she does Bent Creek, and her she just came out with her second episode, and I watched that the other day, and she has, um, she did a stocking, and she designed it out of a thing that was not meant to be a stocking, so you know that's dear to my heart. She had a... Uh, a brother-in-law, I think it was, who was a scuba diver. She found the scuba diver design, made it into a stocking, moved around the motifs and stuff, so kudos to you. So really enjoyed her. Check out the Redneck Bifocal Stock, Redneck Bifocal Stitcher on Flosstube and Instagram. So well worth your while. Last thing that I have to cover is in my previous video I had hit a thousand subs, so I had a giveaway, and so the winner of the Lavender and Lace Angel of Spring is Stephanie Wingett. So congratulations Steph. We will 
get this sent to you if you want to contact me we'll uh, with an email um, you can uh, give me your address and we'll send that out to you so that's all I have for today thank you so much for coming I really appreciate you uh, joining me and hope you enjoyed a little trip to Amsterdam we'll see you next time thanks bye